After the cessation of a woman's menstrual flow, which is referred to as menopause, different women across the world go through this phase of life in different ways. In this special report, our health correspondent Ngozika Ohechisi takes a look at some of the symptoms experienced during this period and how some women are coping with menopause. Menopause is a natural biological process that ends a woman's menstrual cycle. It is diagnosed after a woman has gone 12 months without her menstrual period. The average age a woman gets into menopause is from 51 and above worldwide. However, about 1% of women go into premature menopause before age 40. And in some rare cases, some women go into that stage at 30. Medical experts usually advise that such a woman should seek medical care immediately. There are physical symptoms menopausal women experience, such as hot flashes, reduced libido, vaginal dryness, hair dryness, anxiety, depression, and sometimes the disruption of sleep. Just as different women experience menopause and its symptoms in different ways, Lilian Odumusu tells us she got into menopause stage at 47. This got her worried. Menopause is something we may look up to at a certain age, like you rightly said. I think I, in my own case, I, I entered my menopause at the age of um, 47. 47, yeah. I entered menopause at the age of 47. And um, somehow, I didn't know it was uh, the menopause of a teen. I just saw that um, something changes just came into my lifestyle. I started sweating. I started feeling some kind of pains. And I keep on wondering what was happening, though. I, I, I have um, BP, I'm a BP patient then, and um, I thought maybe it was because of the BP of it, and that's the blood, high blood pressure, HBP. I went to my doctor and I said, uh, I, this is what I'm noticing. I started having this hot flash, and he said, well, it might be menopause. I said, menopause? But I still look at having kids. Sister, he laughed. I said, you want to have kids with your condition? You have BP. And he said, it's not advisable. Well, you just take it. It has come, it has come. But before then, I could remember that um, at a point in time, I think my period ceased for like um, three months. Then it appeared again. So the thing now got me scared, like, what is really happening to me? I don't understand. I saw it, I started menstruating again, and after like um, six, three, four months again, or six months thereabouts, it stopped. I was worried about the whole thing. But at the time, I told myself, why would I be giving myself stress if God has written it this way? Because I believe in God so much. Whatever God has written, I believe is its handwriting and it has come to stay. So you don't force yourself into things that are not, um, you cannot change rather. You don't force yourself into things you cannot change. So at that point in time, I went to my doctor. He asked me to do some tests, and I did some tests. Um, that was just it. I just noticed my period was off and on like that, and there was nothing I could do to it. Though I, he now asked, he gave me some drugs. Yes, I was given some drugs, and at the end, I just told to my, I told myself I don't need to force myself in any situation now. I'm meeting myself. So at that point in time, I just took to fate. Olichi Peace has a different experience. She discovered her menstrual cessation at age 58. She said she wasn't worried as she was aware she was due for menopause. About six years ago, I was 
58 then. And, uh, well, I do not have any problem of, or issue concerning it. I was, it was, my life was just normal. I did not notice anything except that the flow stopped. And I did not go to any hospital to check because I know that I was, uh, I was due for it. So when it stopped, I was not worried in order to start to go to see a doctor for anything I did not. Perception of menopause in Africa varies by culture. For women with multiple births, menopause is likely to be welcomed as an end to childbearing. Lilian Odumosuo had postmenopausal bleeding. She says ignorance is a major factor in Africa. The way our generation reason now, a lot of things have changed. Just like I told you the other time, that I had to take to my faith when I saw things were not, but thank God my doctor was able to tell me then what was happening with me. And when I saw I couldn't do anything to it, there's nothing I could do to it. So I don't need to kill myself. So whether they call it witchcraft or whatsoever, it is not it. It is not it. It comes at a particular age. Some might be lucky, they will see, see their menopause at the age of 50 something. Some might be lucky, even 60. By 60, some are still menstruating. So it depends on individual. It depends on how your circle runs. Dr. Joy Agbara is a consultant obstetrician and gynecologist with the Lagos State University Teaching Hospital, Lassut. She explains the reason some women experience early menopause. You have some women that start the perimenopause earlier from 40. If we begin to see that before 40 years, we say that is premature ovarian insufficiency or failure. You understand? But after the age of 40 years, you, you know, can happen. Of course, you may have people going into menopause earlier, not because it was time, maybe because they had surgery. So we say iatrogenic. A woman who for any reason, maybe she had complex ovarian cysts, she had an endometrioma for which you have to move her. And goes into menopause earlier than it should be. A woman who is undergoing cancer therapy, you know, maybe radiation for any of the cancers, you know, that you expose the ovaries, may go into iatrogenic ovarian failure. You understand? So those ones, you see them earlier. Medically, menopause has no cure but it can be managed. In her first education, the woman needs to be aware that it's not an abnormality, it's just a continuum of, she has moved from one phase of her life into another phase of her life. So if she's psychologically prepared, it's one of the ways that you can manage. And so we encourage them, you know, to join groups of women that are within that age where they can share experiences and all that. And then non-pharmacologic uh, management, um, because of the heat, you want to encourage the woman, you know, to wear more lighter clothes. Some of them get fans, you know, encourage them not to live sedentary life, the, the lifestyle they should move around, exercises at that age. You know, those are non-pharmacologic ways um, of dealing with, with it. Experts say that menopause is not an abnormality but a natural phase every woman will go through. Therefore, it's not something to be ashamed or depressed about. They urge menopausal women to always open up and share their experiences or symptoms with their doctors to get help when needed. Ngozika, Ohaichesi. Oh, we are now joined by Dr. Adeola Folashade Afolabi, consultant, obstetrician, and gynecologist, Federal Medical Center, Kefi, Nasarawa State. Good evening. Good evening. That was a beautiful report by our reporter, Angozika HSC. Very detailed, right? You can say that again. <laughs> All right, so maybe we should. Yes, let's start with something that I think probably wasn't covered, and that is different stages of menopause. Let's start with that. Okay. All right. So talking about menopause, simply put, it's cessation of menstruation 
for a period of 12 months. Now, it occurs in stages. We have the perimenopausal stage, we have the menopause itself, and we have the postmenopausal stage. Okay, the perimenopausal stage covers the first 12 months when there is cessation of menses. And the menopause starts at that 12 months, and then postmenopause is after the cessation. So it's difficult to differentiate between when exactly it is menopause and after menopause. Now, the symptoms that you are supposed to experience after menopause, you start to experience some of them before menopause, before the cessation. Now, this cessation is a riding, is, is a way, a way of the ovary saying bye-bye, I've stopped working. And this ovary, they are something they are they, they form they, they, they are glands located in the female pelvis. And what they do, they secret, they are the major source of the female hormones. So when they stop working, that is when we make diagnosis of menopause. But before they start, now before they stop working, they give you some symptoms to say, I'm stopping, I'm getting old, I, 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 I don't want to work again. This is what happens. Unlike what obtains in men, in females, all the hex in our body, unlike men that secret semen all the time, all the hex in our body, they are what we have gotten from our mother's womb. And then we start to use them up, use them up. By the time they are reduced, maybe like, like less than 1,000, that is when the ovary will say, no, bye-bye, I'm old. I don't want to work again. And then when they are saying bye-bye, the way they start to say it, these are the symptoms you begin to see. The menses becomes irregular. Remember when menses wants to start, and that is at puberty, it starts irregularly. So likewise, when it's about to leave, it becomes irregular. In some people, it will be more frequent. In some people, it will be, it will be lower. In some people, the, the flow will reduce. While in some, it might become more. That is menorrhagia. Apart from that, the woman might begin to experience some form of vaginal dryness and discomfort. And this one can affect their sexual performances because uh, the, the desire is lower, the drive is lower. But this, these are symptoms of this thing can be managed because I, I need to stress it. That is not, uh, it's not a disease. Is a normal phenomenon. Is it's a physiological change. Is is a transition from one form of life to another form of life. And another thing that that such a person can begin to experience is wrinkled skin. And then there's something we call hot flushes. That is sudden experience of heat in the upper part of the body, the the trunk, the neck, and the face. And then it disappears. So when you start to feel have these symptoms but you are still menstruating, that's perimenopausal. But after 12 months of no menses, you make diagnosis of uh, menopause. And then afterwards, when the menses are stopped, these symptoms persist for a while. It's also, I mean, encompass sleep deprivation for some people. And then some people will start to urinate more frequently. This is because the hormone called estrogen is now reduced in the body. The body is no longer secreting it as it was before. That is what is causing all these changes. And I must also add that there are mental uh, affectation of these changes, or, 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 of this uh, period of life too, in which the woman will have mood swing. Some will become depressed, some will become anxious. So the, the, you need to really be conscious of what's happening to you. You need to know that it's a physiological change, and the way you approach it will affect the quality of life. That is talking about uh, the stages. Those are the three stages. All right. So you, like you said, it's not a disease. It's, it's a not change in the phase of a woman's life. Um, but how, how best can it be managed? Are there medical treatments? Are they... Even though it's not a disease, is there a medical way of enhancing some sort of supplement? Yes, we have the ways of managing it. But the first and foremost thing to do is just education first. Once you know what you are expecting and you know what is happening to you, it's not a disease, you know, it's something that you are expecting. Just like uh, when menses comes, some people are knowledgeable about it, they've been trained by their parents and they are expecting it. The way they receive it is different from somebody that just saw blood all of a sudden. So likewise, if we are, we are well educated about it, I like what Plus TV Africa is doing now. That's the public enlightenment. It's Thank going to help you. a lot of people. So kudos to 
this channel. Now, when we are aware, it helps a lot because when they still come to the hospital, before we go to medical aspect, we need to first talk about education. All we do is still to educate them very well. And apart from that, we have other things that should be done. That is non-pharmacological without using drugs now. We need to train them on certain things like uh, clothing, light clothing, somebody has mentioned it, mm -hmm. and then the practice of deep relaxation, deep breathing and relaxation exercise. Then we need to talk, talk, talk to them about their health, their, 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 their diet rather, their diet, especially having a lot of fruits, vegetable and whole grains. Then they need to limit alcohol. They need to seek counseling for mood changes. If you think you're having mood changes, we have behavioral scientists that you can go and see. Then they need to do what we call Kegel muscle exercise. I told you some people will start to urinate frequently because the, with the lack of this hormone, um, the, the muscles controlling urination, some of them become weak. So there's this Kegel muscle exercise. We'll teach them what to do. Before we go to talking about medica medication, what we do in the medication is the hormones that has gone down, we try to hard back the hormone. There are certain things, and also because there's loss of bone density, um, we, we, we try to give them a hard back hormone. The hormone that has gone down, we try to replace it. There are various ways of replacing it, uh, which is not what I will say online now until when they come to us. Mm -hmm. So we try to replace back the hormone, but as we are replacing back the hormone, there are other things that we need to do because as you are using the hormone, there are some other side effects of the hormone. So they should be well aware that there are things that can be given. We have medications that can be given to relieve some of these symptoms uh, that I've earlier highlighted. Well, uh, work life, that a woman's career could possibly be affected somehow with all the changes she's experiencing, sudden changes and all of that. Is there any kind of policy that you think should be put in place um, you know, bearing in mind that uh, the women need to work and then they are going through all of this. Uh, thank you for that question. Now, let me just say that there are policies that should be in place, but it's not limited to females alone. Let me just quickly talk. Let me remind, let us know that there's what we call andropos too. That but the is men? men. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll yes. chip so that in, but let's answer is, this, yes. Let, there's andropos, there's menopause. So as we are educating, first and foremost, as we are educating our women, we need to educate our men too, so that they will be aware that there are women who go through this. Maybe their mother, their sisters, and other like will go through this. So all policymakers too, they need to be aware of this. And um, because the age of retirement is 60, but this happens around 51 years old. So we need to bear this in mind and put it into uh, our policies. Perhaps some people might need to excuse themselves when they feel they are not uh, coping well or the initial phase. So they need to put all this into um, cognizance when they are making the policy. I quite agree that a policy should be in place to help our women. You understand? But by doing this, uh, as we are educating people, educating both men and women, then they will need to know that this thing, but it's not as if it's just the first few years that really affect people. By the time we adjust, the symptoms will not be as uh, much as they were when it first happened. So the first few years, some women might not be so regular at work, and so we need to factor this into it and give them excuse duty when necessary. So you need to Thank take you. that up, I think. With, uh, <laughs> yes, <yeah>, so that, <laughs> because the men may not know, the policy makers may not know, and so uh, people like you who know should probably push uh, of this forward. Well, because of time, we won't be able to talk about um, that of the men, which you talked about, um, but I'm sure that with what you've said, a lot of women listening right now, because before now, just like you rightly um, noted, before PLUS TV, we, we, we really don't hear much about menopause anywhere. It's like uh, some silent th uh, thing that women just run into in the course of their lives. So many women don't seem to know, or they just don't give it much thought, but then it just creeps up on them, and then they realize, I'm changing. And mm -hmm. they, they're sometimes lost. 
How do you respond yeah. to that? A lot of women are not aware. They're not prepared for it. Yeah. Um, that is why I gave kudos to Plus TV Africa. We really need to heighten the public enlightenment in this regard. Both women, not just women alone, both women and men. We need to make everybody become aware of these changes that must come to this. It is it's, it's a normal thing. Just the way we start, started menses, we, we, it will definitely end one day. So we need to let our men and our women become aware of it. I think uh, uh, Sogon too might take it up. That's the Society of uh, Obstetrician and Gynecologists in Nigeria. They might also take it up so that we enlighten people. But there's something I want to mention before we wrap it up. It's different from what you have asked me. Public enlightenment, I agree. But as we are enlightening them, we need to add that um, during this period, especially perimenopausally, the menses, menstruation is irregular. But our women need to be aware that they can still get pregnant during this period. So as we are enlightening our men, women about this, we need to enlighten our men too and let them know. And then I also want to, before I leave uh, the stage, I also want to mention the fact that uh, after menopause, nothing stops our women from having sex. Rather, it's even a form of treatment. Because it's been found out that when they have sex regularly, it's going to increase blood flow to the vagina. So all this vagina dryness, thinning of the vaginal wall and all the like that we are expecting can get treated by this one. And there are ways that we can manage the, the reduced libido, the thinning and all the pain and all the th other things that they are having. There are ways that it can be managed. Just that when they are going through this, they should not go through it alone. They should make noise about it. Like, I appreciate uh, Madam Lillian and Madam Oluchi for coming out publicly to talk about themselves. So if our women will relate with each other in, in this kind of way, it will help other people come in. So that when they get to this stage, they will know that they are not alone and they will be able to cope better. These are the way it is done in Western worlds. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Adiola Falashadi Afolabi, consultant, obstetrician, and gynecologist, Federal Medical Center, Kefi Nasarawa State. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.